Hello, today is an episode or a live stream about the precursor to the cello, the forerunner, the viola da gamba. I just uploaded my most recent episode to anchor.fm forward slash forgotten cello music. It's also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and some others. Here are a couple of ways uh, that you can help this project out and my aspirations. Number one, you just listen to the podcast like I've already mentioned. Number two, uh, please tell your friends. Send them a link of my podcast. You could even go as far if you sponsor an episode. And then the last one is maybe you know a company or a brand that is looking to sponsor a very small-scale production. This first piece that you heard is by John Dowland. It uh, might be his most famous tune, at least the one that sticks out in my memory from music history class back in university. Um, it sounds very much like Flow My Tears. This time that I'm going to use here is really to advertise my podcast episode, episode 28. The link is in the description. Um, the podcast episode this time is uh, a little bit more of a mishmash and uh, more kind of editorial or opinion based my thoughts about various things. So this Pavan by John Dowland, who lived 1563 to 1626, is something uh, melodically and harmonically and rhythmically that is very common in that time period when the viola da gamba is prevalent and is the king of, of um, well, consort or ensemble instrument making and also of arguably solo instrument making. Uh, that is to play, not, not only just making, but playing. And John Dowland, 1563 to 1626, from England. I f when I was looking up viola da gamba music, there's just uh, a plethora of it. It's there were so many people writing compositions. It's it's difficult to choose, and it is surprisingly difficult when you are picking out solo repertoire. Uh, Gambas, of course, have six or seven strings, so and they're tuned in fourths, so you're not having to shift up and down as much, which makes it a lot more um, quick in finding notes. And you can play five note chords. There's you know, five and six note chords in gamba music all the time. Whereas here, if you want to play a five note chord, you have to play one note by itself. You know, maybe something like that. Um, or if you want to play a really tight chord uh, like this, where I have two notes on the same string, A and C sharp, I would do this. You know, if John Dowland's music I found in a, in a, in a set where it's paired with a galliard by Thomas Simpson, who lived uh, 1582 to 1628. And it's very interesting. Um, Pavans are in like uh, cut time, 4-4. Four, four. It's, it's very regular. Um, galliards are in 3-2. So they have a, a different feel to it. I, uh, here's the beginning of the Thomas Simpson Galliard. See if you can find the difference.
that from the beginning, one can hear the difference. I'll play just the first two measures. Here's the Pavan by Dowland. <laughs> by Thomas Simpson. So this is called 13 divisions, and divisions is another way of saying variations. Christopher Simpson was living from 1610 to 1670. So it goes like this. to the first division. As we get later on into cello dominance in the lower end of the register for instruments, uh, maybe the most famous cello work that is a set of variations is the one by Tchaikovsky called Rococo Variations. And um, I won't play it now, I haven't practiced it in many years, but it, go look it up, it's a wonderful piece of music, it's brilliant. Uh, even the rearranged version by, oh, pardon me, I forgot who rearranged it. It was uh, premiered by a famous cellist of the era, and he just completely rearranged it. <laughs> As the story goes, when Tchaikovsky saw the mutilation of his original score, he didn't protest. He just stated, take it, play it. <laughs> That's a paraphrase, of course. And now that's the way most people play it, although there's been a resurgence. And, of course, Stephen Nisselis has recorded the original, which is really cool. Go listen to that one, too. It's worth, worth the time. Now we go to a composer from 1660, born in 1660, 
named Johann Schenk. Uh, this is a viola da gamba piece, and it's from a suite in A minor. But the cello is already beginning to make some headway in the, the world of orchestra and solo playing because of its louder qualities, stronger qualities. Anyway, this is a prelude from Johann Schenk's Suite in A minor. that gambas often play very tight sonorities where you could easily play it on piano but on and gamba but you can't do it on cello uh, and have it spread out unless you had an enormous hand and uh, I've tried this many times and it just doesn't work as you can see and here but if I wanted to play it with the C sharp, the third, I'd have to do it like this, where I change the the feel, the gravity of the chord, or it'd have to be like this. Again, it changes the well. It's also changing the register, so it's it's just not right for a perfect authentic cadence. So you could do this. where you'd have kind of a very faint third, or you could do it the way I chose to do it. I think it's pleasant if you can practice it so it comes out smooth. Now we go back not too far. Uh, Marat Marais, a French gambist from 1650. 6 to 1728, very well known and prolific composer uh, and player, of course, of the viola da gamba. So he wrote uh, a lot of music. I actually have in printed music a suite of his that's very delightful. Um, I don't remember the transcriber at the moment. It's just a thought that popped into my head. Anyway, this, this is a folia, and uh, it's quite a well-known tune, and it was utilized quite often. So I'll just do a few variations, not, not very many. I think it's, I don't even know how many variations but it's it's quite lengthy. <laughs>
tricky, very, very tricky stuff, especially for unpracticed uh, cellist like myself. Okay, now, uh, just to showcase a little bit more of what was the, the general feel toward the end of the 17th century when the cello is starting to gain a foothold. Here's a piece by An Arcangelo Corelli. This comes from um, a Sinfonia, and it's the jig or giga. And he lived from superb uh, just rolls along very easily and naturally uh, of course there's always you know everybody has heard it although may, they may not be aware that there's this very famous Christmas uh, concerto concerto rosso uh, and I think I said it wrong at the beginning this is from a concerto rosso um, the Christmas Concerto, and uh, it's this is another thought that just popped in my head, and if you haven't listened to it conscientiously, knowing that it's Corelli, go look for it. The Christmas Concerto by Arcangelo Corelli. Just fabulous music. I mean, it's it sounds Christmassy, uh, it's sparkly, it's dancey, and it's happy. But it's really good for any time of the year. Just, just like, well, Christmas music is good for any time of the year. If you want to think about snow, and I happen to live in a place where snow is not possible, unfortunately. It's too, too bloody hot. Go listen to a podcast, episode 28. You'll find a link in the description below. Thanks for listening.